Jeff Cowan here from Jeff Cowan's Pro Talk. Thank you for coming back and watching my weekly podcast entitled Right Service, Write Your Own Paycheck, The Path to Making Over $100,000 a Year When Writing Service in the Automotive Industry. And you know, at this recording, 20% of you are doing just that, but that means that 80% of you are not. So what are we going to do about that? What we're going to do about it is you're going to keep coming back and listening to this podcast, and I'm going to show you how through tips and techniques and word tracks and processes on how you can get yourself in that elite group of the ones making $100,000 a year or more. Now, if you're in that elite group making $100,000 a year or more, you keep listening too because I'm going to show you how to even make more money. I'm coming to you this week with, a, with what I believe is going to be a great message for you. And what it's entitled is, are you solving your problems on your service drive or are you masking your problems on the service drive? Because right now, by and large, most service, most service drives out there today, service managers and business owners, they're masking the problems they're having on their service drives instead of solving them. Now, I can best uh, make my case by sharing a story with you. I remember going, going home one night, and as soon as I walked in the door, I knew immediately I was in trouble because here's exactly what the wife said. I'm going to kill them. I've had enough. Either they go or I go. I've had enough. Now, I got to admit, that's the kind of thing you hope your spouse would say when they're talking about their own mother and their aunt. But in this case, she wasn't. Instead, she was talking about my dogs. That's the last per people, our pets, the pe things that I wanted to talk about. I didn't want my dogs to go away, but here's what happened. Apparently, one of them had peed on a rug, and not just any rug, but a rug in a room that not only are most people not allowed to sit in, not even allowed to sit in, let alone pee on the rug, but these guys went into the formal living room and peed on the rug, and she had had enough, because this wasn't the first time this had happened. See, this had been happening for quite a while, and in all, on all kinds of, in all, in all of our rooms and all kinds of different rugs, and my wife had just had enough. After, after several months of trying to solve this problem, she just had enough. I mean, we'd done everything, and I got to tell you, in our defense, we did everything we could to keep this from happening. We bought gates, we read the books, we watched the videos, we put them in crates, we took them out of crates, we, put, we wouldn't allow them in certain rooms. We, we, we got even, I even went as far as getting a cheap doggy door. I think it cost a hundred bucks. I got it at Home Depot. It was a temporary thing. I took it in, it kind of went in the sliders that ran out to the backyard, and it worked the first two times they ran through it, but the third time they ran through it, since it was temporary and it was cheap, it started rattling and almost falling out, and they wouldn't go through it because it scared them. I mean, we literally tried everything we could, and my wife was at her wit's end. She was done. The dogs had to go. I reluctantly, a couple days later, went over to the vet, a person I really trust that placed dogs, and I told them I got to get rid of the dogs. Now, they were shocked because they know how much I like my dogs. I love these dogs. They're just fun. They're my best friends, right? Well, they asked why I wanted to get rid of them, and I told them the whole story, and they, they said this. Look, we know you like your dogs, and we know, the, the, we know they're in the habit of using the restroom all over your house. But before you give them away, would you have a problem with one of our expert trainers, somebody that we know, an expert trainer, come into your house and just having to look around? Well, I uh, agreed because I wanted to do everything I could to keep the dogs there, so I invited this dog trainer over to our house when my wife wasn't there. The dog trainer gets to our house and she walks through our house. She goes in every room. She looks at all the things we had done. She walks out in the backyard. Uh, she introduces herself to the dogs. She plays with them for several minutes. And then she kind of goes off in the corner with the dogs for about 10 or 15 minutes, asking if she could be alone with them. She walks them out in the backyard and then she comes back over and says, I've got the solution. For $1,000, I can solve your solution. Now, I can solve your problem. Now, including the $1,000, she told me that she was going to put a permanent in the wall, permanent dog door, and she was going to solve our problem because what she told me was is we were masking the problems. You see, everything that we came up with always left the dogs with an option of going to the bathroom in the house. Whether we put them in a crate, whether we put them in the laundry room, whether we blocked them off, no matter what we did, there was always an option to either go out, wait until we got home to go outside or go in the house. We were actually enabling them to do what we didn't want them to do. So I convinced my wife, I told, I told the lady on the spot, yes, I want you to do this, I want you to solve this problem. I convinced my wife, give me one more shot. I didn't tell her about the $1,000. I don't think she knows now. She'll know it now after watching this. But I paid the lady the $1,000, and literally, literally, just like she, she told me, the trainer, this is the part of the story I left out, because she told me if I spent the $1,000 and let her do what, I, what she needed to do, within three days, three days. Now, this is almost a year we've been trying to solve this. She guaranteed me within three days she would solve the problem. So when she came back in, 
She put the permanent door in, and she worked my dog with my dogs for three days. I can tell you, with a very, very rare exception, over the last ten years, my dogs have not gone to the restroom in the house. And if they have, it's usually because we've we've made a mistake and not them. She finally solved the problem. She pointed out that we were masking the problem. We were actually enabling for this problem to exist. We enabled these dogs, and she finally solved the problem. And I tell you what. I was delighted because I got to keep the dogs, and like I've already mentioned, I've had them, over for, uh, had them for now over 10 years. So why am I bringing this up? Why am I talking about this right here? How does this relate to you? Well, I'm going to share that with you right now. Many, many times we visit service centers of all types, and we find that you are doing the same thing we were doing with our, with our dogs. You're doing the same thing with your frontline service employees that we were doing with our dogs. You're enabling them to underperform. You're enabling them to not do what you're paying them to do. Now, now, what do I mean? What do I mean? I'll come back and tell you in a second because before I tell you what I mean, I want you to know this. I'm taking my two-day workshop out on the road again. This time I'm going to Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm going to Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm going to Denver, Colorado, and you want to sign yourself up for this and you want to do it now here's why you know you you write me all the time and you call me all the time and you text me all the time and say you want to make more you want to have higher customer retention you want higher survey scores well if you really do come to this workshop because I'm going to show you how to do all three of those things I'm going to show you how to get an instant five tenth increase on in, in, in your sales I'm going to show you how to get your customer retention above 80 85 percent within 9 to 12 months I do this all the time I can make this happen for you and I'm even going to show you how to get perfect yes I use the word perfect survey scores this workshop I'm presenting myself I will be there it is killer I've been doing this for 31 years and I'm here to tell you this is not hyperboil this is literally the best workshop I've ever taken out on the road now you say how do you know that because I've had it on the road now for almost seven months and the attendees are telling us they're getting the best results we've ever seen in 31 years. I mean, I've nailed it with the content, I've nailed it with the processes, I've nailed it with the word tracks, and if you come, I'm gonna show you how to go back to your service drives and nail it as well. If you're serious about what you're doing, tired of playing around, and you're not making $100,000 a year, you owe it to yourself, and more importantly, you owe it to your family. You owe it to your family to give them the lifestyle that they so deserve. Now, if you're not a workshop fan, I also have in-store training where we will show up on your service drive and stand out on the service drive. 85% of the time we're at your, at your business, 85% of the time side by side with the advisors, coaching, critiquing, role playing, and even writing service to show how our stuff works. We have management training programs, show your service managers how to be the best they can be, show them the latest and greatest techniques. I have online training, I have books, and I have DVDs, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Yes, if you continue to watch this podcast, I can help you be better at what you are. I can get you some numbers. But if you really want to do it quick, you want to do it fast, you want to do it today, and you want to be the best you can be, you gotta, gotta invest in yourself in some of these products. Okay, so we were talking about my dogs and how we've enabled them. You know, no matter what, if we blocked them off in a room, there was still the option for them to go in the house. We put them in a cage, there was still an option for them to go in the house. If we put potty pods down, there was, there was an option for them to go in the house. You know what I mean? Even with the, the whole thing. So we were enablers. We weren't solving the problem, we were masking the problems. And I was about to explain to you what I mean because, again, we go to these different service departments all the time and we see business owners and managers not solving their problems but masking them. So here's what I mean. You know, one of the biggest selling points, let's take tablets for example, one of the biggest selling points that tablet companies will encourage you to invest in their product for is because it will force your service advisors to get up from behind their desk and over the car and write the customer up, right? I mean, that's one of their biggest selling points. Here's another thing, one of the biggest selling points to have an advisor is that cashier their own customers at the end of the day. People try to get those systems set up because then what it does is it forces the service advisor to talk to every one of their customers at the end of the day so it, it reduces the risk of them misleading the customer or not being there at the end of the day to fade, fade, to fade heat. One of the biggest selling points to having online route sheets is the service advisor can pull it up online versus having a route sheet right in front of them that they fill out with pens and papers and all that stuff that it's going to be more, more convenient. One of the biggest selling points to have an online service menu is that your service advisor, advisors, you no longer have to worry about whether or not they're handing them out to everybody because you can email them to everybody. If they forget to email them to somebody, then somebody else in the dealership can, so now 100% of our people get the menus. And, but and doing all of that stuff, because don't get me wrong, I like all that technology. And I could go on and on here with more technology. 
But when you bring those things in, rarely do your numbers change. Did any, did any of your numbers really change? Did any of those numbers go to the, the type of numbers I'm talking about, over 2.5 hours per repair order? Did you get above 85% customer retention? Do you have perfect survey scores? Are you making $100,000 a year? You got all this stuff. You gave your people all this stuff, and they're not doing that. Why? Because you mask the problem. Now, what do I mean? What I'm talking about here is if you really want to solve these problems, this technology stuff is important, but it's not going to solve your problems. If you want to solve the problems, here's what you have to be brave enough and willing to do. It's this simple. You have to be willing to create a process. Write that down. Number one, you have to be willing to create a process. Number two, you have to be willing to train your people side by side as they're writing up customers on the service drive on how to execute that process. And then you have to hold them accountable either through job security or their income to do what you want done to execute that process to get the numbers you deserve. Because again, all we've done is mask it. You want your people out from behind their desk. You don't need a tablet. Would I have a tablet? Sure, but you don't have to have a pet tablet to do that. You know how you get them out there? You legislate it into their job description. If you get out there and you're over at the car, then you're going to get paid. If you don't, well, then you won't. Hey, if, if, you, if you don't handle your customers and deliver the vehicle at the end of the day and you force somebody else to do it because there's a bunch of heat, then you, we're going to ding your paycheck or affect you where it really hurts, right? I mean, same thing. You have to tell them what you want, train them how to do it, and then hold them accountable to do it because if you don't, because that will solve the problem, okay? Because anything short of that, you're enabling them, and here's what's going to happen if you continue to enable them. They're going to keep peeing on your rug. All right, so if you want to solve your problems, just, just find a process, create a process that's going to, going to support who you want to be, train your people to execute those, those processes, and then hold them accountable either through their income or job security to do what you want. And then if you want to add in all the frills and then all the technology to make their job maybe a little bit more efficient, then you can. But none of that stuff's going to work. Repeating myself again until you're willing to train them and hold them accountable to do what you know is going to get you these numbers. And if you're struggling to come up with the process, you're struggling to come up with your own training program, then call me. I and my team will solve your problems. And if you want to solve your problems, then you simply pick up the phone right now. I dare you. Pick up the phone right now and dial 1-800-248-2931. one 248 2931 Or as a matter of fact, I'll even go a step further. Call my personal cell phone number, 317-506-1003, 317-506-1003. Text me and tell me, I want your help. I'm ready to change. I'm ready to have a process. I'm ready to train my people. I'm ready to hold them accountable. I'm ready to be the best I can be and help my people become the best they can be because I want them to be over 2.5 hours per repair order. I want my, re my customer retention to be 80 85% within 12 months, and I want perfect survey scores, and I want to earn the money that I deserve so I can take, take it home to my family and give them the lifestyle that they deserve. If you're ready to do that, I dare you. Pick up the phone and dial that number, 1-800-248-2931. Or check us out at automotiveservicetraining.com, automotiveservicetraining.com. Hey, my name is Jeff Cowan from Jeff Cowan's Pro Talk. I'm here to help you, and I will help you and can help you if you engage with me. Between now and next week, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go out and help as many customers as you can. I want you to get them so excited about your product that they buy everything you present because they need it. They're so excited when they do, they give you a perfect survey score and they come back and give you more business, which allows you to make the income you deserve so you can do what I told you I want you to do, which is to take that home and give your family the life they deserve because between now and next week, that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go find as many customers as I can and I'm going to get them so excited about my product that they invest in it. They become the best they can be. It allows me to continue to be the best that I am and earn the income that I deserve so I can continue to enjoy this marvelous, marvelous life that I have with my wife and two dogs. It's a great one. No be peace on the rug anymore around our house. See you next week.